Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Thomas McDonald. Uh, well, thank you uh, all for joining us this evening. And one of the things that's been terribly impressive, which be, has been mentioned a couple of times, is the poise and composure of these young people that we've seen here this evening, starting with the performers from Winnetonka and also the, the kids from uh, North Kansas City that, that talked about their junior achievement uh, experiences. And that's really what it's all about, is recognizing the, the contribution that youth makes to all of our endeavors. Uh, I had hoped through the video to uh, recognize uh, the DST team. I, I heard uh, you know, the kids talking tonight about two things in particular, the importance of having a team uh, and the focus on leadership. And DST has had a, a very strong team since its inception in 1969. Uh, Bill Doremus, whose uh, history you'll, you saw a little bit of there, was uh, a honoree of this group some years back as were other key individuals that were associated with Kansas City Southern, like uh, Paul Henson. Uh, I'd hope to have a few other references in the, the video. Uh, we have an awful lot of people at DST who've been involved with junior achievement uh, for a long time. Charlie Shellhorn, who was involved and president here and involved on a national level. Uh, Phil Kanzler, who's very much involved today. Randy Young, a, a whole host of, of DST people have been involved with junior achievement for, for a very, very long time. Uh, certainly, as Bob mentioned, uh, you know, for all three of us, it's, it's a, an honor and uh, it's, I think, uh, inspiring to see people come out and recognize the teamwork that it takes to build an organization. Stepping back from that for a minute, just as, as a sidelight, and, and I don't know that I ever had the passion for a mentor that Bob did, but uh, at least somebody told me a few things some time back and, and therefore I would like to tell you that no matter what the honor, no matter what the forum, nothing can eclipse my honeymoon. <laughs> I also intend to have a longer life expectancy by saying things like that. So. <laughs> you know, the, the importance of teamwork is, is uh, awfully uh, you know, key to the, the success of any uh, organization. Uh, and, and that's been expressed. And, and in listening to the, the young people up here and seeing their poise and composure, uh, one thing did occur to me, and I, I didn't have prepared remarks. I very seldom make them because I find whenever you're the second or third speaker in any type of a thing that, that usually whatever you thought you were going to say, somebody else is going to say first. So I usually kind of like to see where it's what's coming out. But I'd like to go back to the leadership thing, and I think uh, Gail and, and Bob are certainly great examples of this. A couple of years ago, I was uh, asked to uh, make a commencement speech at, uh, to, the, to the graduate division at Pepperdine. And uh, I guess when I was originally called, I was flattered, so I said yes. And then I got to thinking, well, what, what do you say at a commencement speech? You know, you, you, theoretically, uh, you're trying to say something relevant, uh, if not inspirational. Uh, but on the other hand, you're talking to a class who has been there for uh, a number of years and is pretty anxious to get on with it, so you have to kind of try and uh, put that together. Actually, it reminded me when I graduated from uh, Pennsylvania, and I thought, well, this may be the same type of audience I'm talking about. The graduate school got out two weeks before the undergraduate school, and it, it wasn't a walk up and get your diploma because there were, I don't know, 6,000 graduates combined between the undergraduate and the graduate division. Uh, so, it, on the, a lot of the graduate students didn't hang around, but they wanted a full auditorium. So you would go to the student union and the, the university had set up a process where you went down and you paid a hundred bucks, which paid for the rental of a cap and gown and paid a undergraduate fifty bucks to go sit in your seat. Um, 
So I got to thinking, well, you know, I'm not even quite sure who I'm going to be talking to out here. Um, but, you know, when, when you think about saying something in an academic thing, I thought, well, what, what if anything, could I, could I put together for this? And uh, I got to thinking about uh, leadership and, you know, certainly the things that Bob said, and, and you look at uh, people like Bob and Gail. Uh, I said, well, you know, I'm going to come up with a, uh, something academic. So I came up with a formula uh, to build a little bit of a presentation around, and it was uh, uh, R squared plus R equals L. And what I tried to build into that, the R squared, and by the way, this is not a mathematically correct uh, formula, um, the implication of the squared was that the, that the first R, that really were subdivided into two, and that it was a two-way street, and that was... Uh, respect and responsibility uh, that you know if you're going to develop any leadership skills uh, you have to uh, gain the respect of those individuals that you're working with but you have to respect them uh, and you have an obligation to be responsible uh, to them uh, so it's and obviously the, the people in any organization that that, that was the two-way street side and the two dimension to it but adding the second R, which I thought was uh, reasonably important, was the element of risk. And uh, I think most everyone is a leader at some point in time. And some people lead on a more consistent and ongoing basis, but there's a lot of situational leaders. Uh, how many times have you been with, with a group where something occurs or it's a crisis or a, an event that people step up? Those are the situational leaders. So I, I think that everybody has uh, those leadership capabilities, but they come out in, in different uh, aspects of their, their life. But the element of risk is one that, that you have to think of because, you know, generally uh, organizations or individuals don't succeed without taking some degree of risk. But if you're in a leadership position or aspire to be, you, you have to assess your ability to uh, accept risk and, accept, uh, and assess the ability of those around you to accept risk. Uh, because you can't uh, put too much risk on individuals and expect them to perform. And I think ultimately leaders have to take more of the risk uh, sort of for their own portfolio uh, in order to foster an organization uh, that can operate effectively. So I'd come up with this uh, R squared plus R equals L. And, and I really do believe when you, when you look at the uh, types of individuals on it, and I, Bob and Gail, that, that you know, they're very well respected. They, they take responsibility seriously. And clearly by starting any business and, and putting your personal assets and, and other things uh, uh, on the line, uh, it's that element of risk that you bring all that together, and to me that really gets to the, to the L or, or leadership. So I thought I, that might be worth recounting because I, uh, I'm not suggesting that it's, uh, you know, a, a description of, of all leadership characteristics or whatever, but I, I think when you, you think about the two-way responsibility, uh, the respect and, uh, and responsibility, and the element of risk, I, I think all those have to be considered. And I think when we think about how we develop leaders, how we put in programs like junior achievement and so forth, I think we have to focus on those elements that, that you have to have that mutual respect, you have to take responsibility. And at some point, somebody has to step up and, and take the risk. So all I can do tonight is, is uh, thank you on behalf of really all the, the team people that have, have built DST over the years, you know, since 1969. Uh, we started very small. Uh, we have a, a very solid organization today, much larger than, than it used to be with about 10,000 people worldwide. But it's, in many ways, it's a large team, but it's made up of a whole bunch of very small teams. And all those people come together uh, to, to make DST what it is. And, and the accomplishments of DST really can't be summed up in, in any one individual. Uh, you know, certainly Doremus had a lot to do to, to get this started. Without him, we wouldn't, wouldn't be here today. But it's really that collective contribution over time that, that makes DST uh, recognized in this community, I think, is a, is a company that's involved, a company that cares, and a company who all of our associates individually care or are involved. Uh, so all I can do uh, at this point is uh, to, to thank Junior Achievement for this honor. It's uh, great to, to be included with the other two individuals. And thank you all for coming. And, and, and I think it's particularly important that we all support the development of our youth by teaching them those leadership principles, by supporting their interest in, as Bob pointed out, the, you know, the, the capitalistic society that we have, because it wouldn't only be ad agencies that weren't here if we didn't, didn't have uh, that type of an economy. It would be most everything that we do. So thank you very much. Thank you.